summertime florida's almost like that at four o'clock it's gonna <laughs> you know it's gonna rain somewhere in florida but the floridians go up here at the beach just let it rain and it'll be 30 minutes and you just go back out but a lot of the folks that aren't local they'll they'll leave all right let's continue singing unto the lord number 67 the love of god number 67 67 Thank you. 
we used to do where the pastor, you know, Miss Chris is playing the, the songs that, that, you know, like this, but usually we'd be singing and people would be standing and some people would be gripping their, you know, are they going to make that decision? Are they going to go forward? Or what's going to happen? And I don't, I don't even know how they would deal with that in COVID at all. But um, still, what my challenge was on choosing these invitation songs is to ask a question. Do we have room for Jesus? Not just for salvation, but we're talking about prayer tonight. Are we going to call upon the Lord and, and, and we lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ and our elected leaders and our missionaries? So just a challenge. And, and it's the same on the next song. You just flip the page over 1, 3, 29. God's waiting for us. He's waiting for us to make that decision that we you know, just don't do it on a Sunday night, but maybe you're on the way. Number 329, the Savior's waiting. King Hezekiah tonight. King Hezekiah is recorded as having three prayers. He is one of the good kings. If you're here with us on Wednesday night, we're going to try to go through the kings. And apparently, we not, may not be able to get through all the kings before Pastor comes back home, but we'll do the best we can. But Hezekiah was one of the good kings. Unfortunately, 
at the end, he made some mess up. We'll talk about that uh, later on. But we're talking about King Hezekiah's prayer. King Hezekiah's prayer. We find here that King Hezekiah receives a letter. And what does he do with it? He reads it, and he goes to the house of the Lord. He goes to the temple, and he spreads the letter before the Lord. Spreads the letter before the Lord. So what is going on here? Why... What, what's causing him to take this letter? What was this letter? Just to backtrack a little bit, we know he was a good king, because 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 6 says, For he clave to the Lord. For he clave to the Lord. We need to be cleaving to the Lord. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. He clave to the Lord. So, have you ever gotten horrible news? News that you or your family is in imminent danger. News that will change the world as you know it. News, maybe you've gotten news that you've been told you have a terminal illness. This is the news that Hezekiah is going to be receiving during these prayers. And this is what he does with them. Hezekiah received this sort of news and he took the situation to the Lord. So he receives this letter from the hands of messengers, receives it, and immediately goes to the house of the Lord and spreads it before the Lord. This verse tells of a crisis faced by King Hezekiah and the nation. Hezekiah receives a letter and he takes it before the Lord. And to backtrack on the history here, Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, is basically conquering, I'll just say, the known world, right at the time. He's conquering the world, and then one nation state after another nation state is just falling. Well, Jerusalem is next on his list. Jerusalem is next on the list. Verse 10, for the second chronic Kings, uh, verse, uh, 19, verse 10. Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah the king. This is uh, Sennacherib sending messengers. Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah the king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God in whom thou trustest receive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all land by destroying the utterly, and shalt thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my fathers have destroyed? As Gozan, and Haran, and Rezpa, and the children of Eden which were in Telassar? Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of Sephardim, of Hena, and Iba? This is a letter of Declaration of war. We're coming after you. Surrender now for the good of your people. Surrender now so your people's lives are not killed. We find here that this letter is mocking. Mocking God. Mocking the one true God. Telling Hezekiah, don't believe that your God can save Jerusalem from us. Don't believe that. Don't believe that um, <clears throat> Jerusalem will be delivered, will not be delivered into our hands because it's going to be delivered into our hands. Don't believe those lies that your God is telling you. Because look at this, look at the facts here. Look what Hesiria has already done. We've fallen, we've utterly destroyed the nations around you and all the land. And he starts listing Gozan, Haran, Respa, children of Eden. He's seen, Hezekiah knows this happening. Knows this happening. And so this is the letter. That Hezekiah receives. One that's mocking God, one that's showing war is coming, and Hezekiah has no other hope but God. And so he immediately runs to the temple and spreads the letter before the Lord and prays over it. Give up and now save your people. This is what Sennacherib is telling Hezekiah. Assyria is about to attack Jerusalem. Hezekiah had witnessed. All even has witnessed even the northern kingdom fall to Assyria, right? The northern kingdom has fallen into captivity, and now Hezekiah found himself in an impossible situation. And fortunately, his first reaction is to take it to the Lord. Remember, we talked about well, when people here on Sunday morning we talked about laughter, and many times we'll lose something, and it takes a little while with our stubborn brains to finally recognize. My only hope is to ask the Lord. <laughs> Instead of looking at where I 
came in this morning and I uh, could not find my tithing envelope. I put it in my Bible, just stick it in my Bible and pulled out and well, it wasn't there. And I ransacked through my Bible, where is it? Went back to my bag over there, had my phone there, wasn't there. I basically had no hope until I said, Lord, uh, you're going to have to show me where it is. So my head turned three rows behind me and there it was on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> happened to me all the time. Yep. Uh, Ed, uh, Ed told me a funny story after Sunday school. Uh, Ed uh, Schumann told me a funny story after Sunday school this morning. And, uh, at one of his surgeries, he, uh, he woke up from one of the surgeries and noticed he, had, he was cut open in seven spots on his body. And he said, Doctor, what are you, what's going on here? Why do I have seven, seven why am I even... You know, why is there seven uh, uh, wounds all over my body like this? And the doctor says, well, it's always the last place you look. <laughs> uh, always the last place you look. Anyway, what I'm pointing out here is Hezekiah gets the letter, what does he do? He's not mobilizing his forces and trying to get ready. He went to the Lord. He knew there was no other way. He knew this the first thing he had to do. He went to the Lord, right? And so this is... Something that Hezekiah seems to be very good at. He goes to the Lord first. Goes to the Lord first. Maybe we'd all have a council meeting, a war meeting, take advisement, and then we go pray. No, he's going to pray first. He's going to pray first. And he laid the letter before the Lord. Yeah, you know, in one aspect, he's very desperate. There's, he, has, he knows the situation. He knows there's no hope. He's desperate. Verse 15, And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord. So here's his prayer. And said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear, open, Lord, thine eyes and see and hear the words of Sennacherib, which has sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations in their lands. And have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hand, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the, verse, of the earth may know thou, that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Isn't that an amazing prayer? Amazing prayer. So how did Hezekiah pray? What things can we glean from this first prayer? First of all, he, we see he gave adoration to the Lord. He gave adoration to the Lord God of Israel, which dwelt between the cherubims. You know, in other words, he's not in the Holy of Holies. He's outside. He can only go as far as he can. He went to the temple, and he only can go as far as he can. The Lord that's in, in the cherubims, which is on the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies, this is the God he is praying to. O Lord God of Israel, which dwelt between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, all the kings of the earth, Thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, you have made heaven and earth. You are the God. There is no other God beside thee. So first of all, he gave adoration to the Lord. Second of all, using the same, same verses, verses here, he confesses to the Lord that he is God. In other words, he trusts in him alone. Right? He's confessing, you are my God. You are my God alone, and I'm trusting in you. You are the only one that can take care of this situation. You are the God of the universe. You made heaven and earth. There's nothing you cannot do. Third thing we see is he asked God to hear him and see the situation. Lord, bow down thy ear, ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. Hear the words that are on this letter. Uh, Hezekiah is bringing the God of the universe down and listen, see. Look what I'm going to bring them down as a I don't know, a friend, almost a friend, having a conversation with a friend. This is the situation I'm dealing with. Come here, listen to this, see this, get down and dirty with this. Fourth thing we see, he reports the facts of the letter. He repeats the letter to the Lord. Notice this. Hear the words of Sennacherib, which sent him to report, reproach the living God, verse 17, of a truth. In other words, there's some truth in this letter that I've received from, from uh, King Sennacherib. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations of the land. It is true. They have come around. They have destroyed. Nations have fallen to the Assyrians. And verse 18, and have cast their gods into their fire. 
into the fire, for they were no god, but the men, work of men's hand, wood and stone, therefore they have destroyed them. So Assyria has destroyed the nations, and he has destroyed their gods. This, the Assyrian Empire has destroyed the other gods. No other gods have come up and defended their own nation, have stopped the Assyrians from conquering their nation. No other gods have done this. And what is it? What has the Assyrian Empire done? Have taken those other gods and thrown them into the fire. Right? Burned them up, destroyed them up, destroyed these other gods. What are these other gods? They're just wood and stone, made by man's hands. There is no comparison between those gods, right, little g, those things that they're worshiping, and the one true God. And the one true God. There is no comparison to the one true God. That's the mistake King Sennacherib made. <laughs> he's, he's trying to put the one true God with all these other false religions. I don't know, if you were God, what an incredible slap in the face it is to be compared to pieces of wood and stone. Right? That is just... Think about our Heavenly Father, and that's what he's compared to. The world is wanting to pray to stop instead of the one, the God of the universe. That's just a big slap. But here, here Hezekiah is pointing out, those are just wood and stone. I am praying to the one true God. One true God. Fifthly, we see... He requests that Jerusalem be saved, right? He makes his request. He makes his request. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save us out of his hand. Save us. He has a request, right? He, he gives adoration to the Lord. He confesses to the Lord. You are the one true God. He lays out the situation before the Lord, and he makes his request. Save us. Simple, isn't it? <laughs> it's not complicated. Very simple. And what's, look at the next part that he does. He requests that Jerusalem be saved so that the earth may know that the Lord, he is God. So that the Lord may know that he is God and he alone is God. Uh, I had to take a, uh, I guess, a negotiating class for for work. And so one of the, one of the number one negotiating tools is when you're selling to somebody, make sure they know this is what you're getting. So, because you want something, let them know you're getting something here. So Hezekiah is saying, save us so that you can be seen as the one true God in the world, right? Here's something God gets, <laughs> right? Not that he needs it because he is God, right? But here is, Hezekiah has, does a little negotiating here. So an excellent negotiating, negotiating tool, letting the opposing side letting know the opposing side the benefit of them giving you your request. Psalm 67, 1, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, Selah, that thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health upon, among all nations. The Lord uh, saving faith upon all nations. Hezekiah is praying the things that God wants. Right? God wants to, wants to be seen as the one true God. He is the one true God. And let his glory be known among all the nations. So this is his prayer. Simple. Right? Simple. Letting him know the needs. Laying it out before him. And asking, Lord, save us. Lord, save us. Sometimes that's all we can pray ourselves, right? In a situation. I don't have... I don't know what to do, Lord. Save us. Save us. How long did Hezekiah have to wait for his request to be made. He has immediate danger outside. At least, at least 185,000 Assyrian soldiers are on their way to Jerusalem. Just waiting outside the door. 185,000. How long? Lord, you're going to have to do something pretty fast. <laughs> and God sends an immediate response through Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. Verse 32. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into the city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it, for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. David relays a message through Isaiah that Assyria will not come into the city. Nor shoot any arrows. A shot won't be fired. 
and there won't be any siege laid against it. So that's what banking, this term here, bank, means, nor cast a bank against it. There's not going to be a siege, a siege made against it. And Assyria is going to just return home the way it came. An amazing response. Does this make any sense? If you're Hezekiah, you look outside the walls of Jerusalem, there's 185,000 campfires out there, <laughs> ready and bristling, and swords are being sharpened, and Isaiah comes to you and says, see those people out there? They're not even going to come through those our doors. They're not going to shoot one arrow. They're not even going to lay siege on the city. They're just going to go back home the way they came. What? <laughs> well... And the reason for this, he's done it. The Lord is going to save the city for God's own sake and for David's sake. He's doing it for himself. God heard Hezekiah's prayer. God's heard every, uh, Hezekiah's prayer. So 185,000 camp soldiers ready to destroy, destroy Jerusalem, and this is the response that Hezekiah got. Couldn't get any better response, but how is it going to happen? Well, that very night, God said, did something amazing. Verse 35. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians and a hundred, four score, and five thousand, 185,000. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So some after a king of Assyria departed and went and returned and dwelt in Nineveh. Hezekiah woke up. Well, this is amazing. In fact, right? Hezekiah goes to bed, goes to sleep, rests. He gave the situation over to the Lord. He's got a message from Isaiah. I don't know how this is going to happen, but there's nothing I can do, to do tonight. It's in the Lord's hands. Wakes up the next morning, looks over the walls, and there's 185,000 dead corpses on the ground. What happened last night? <laughs> what did the Lord do? Look what the Lord has done. Amazing. Amazing. 185,000, that's a lot of bodies. Lot of bodies. I was in, uh, we drove through Fredericksburg and, um, Spotsylvania. Uh, well, Spotsylvania. Spotsylvania, yes. And that is our deadliest location here in the United States in the Civil War, and upwards of 65,000 bodies. Uh, just horrible, horrible. And here we have in front of Jerusalem 185,000 dead in one night because the angel of the Lord came upon them. The Lord protected Israel. So here we have Hezekiah took it, the impossible situation and gave it to God. He took the impossible situation and gave it to God. Give your impossible situation to the Lord and see what he's going to do with it. See what he's going to do with it. Second prayer. Second prayer. This is a person, the first one is a national situation. A national situation. We have national needs and we need to take our nation to the Lord, right? The second prayer is a personal one. Hezekiah has notified that he has a terminal disease. Terminal disease. Isaiah chapter 38 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 38 and verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. So he's already sick. He's already laying in bed. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. I don't think Isaiah had a good bedside manner, did he? <laughs> this sounds like something that Pastor Allen's heard a couple times. Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Well, that's something you don't want to hear. Those are uh, that's very horrible news. So what should Hezekiah do with this news? Well, you know the answer, pray. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Hezekiah turned his face, unto the, uh, face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. The first time he took the letter and went to the temple. That's an open public space, right? This is something the nation, this is, this is something the nation saw publicly. In other words, corporate prayer. The second time he faces toward the wall, imagine he's lying in bed, in his bedchamber, his bedroom. <laughs> Isaiah comes in and says, you're done. <laughs> you are, uh, set your prayers in order because you are going to die. Hezekiah rolls over and groans and faces toward the wall and prays. He's in his own bedroom. How many of us had weeping tears in our own bedroom over something that's personal? Right? Something that's heavy on our hearts. 
and hear Hezekiah heard of something that was not something he wanted to hear. He wanted Isaiah to come on in and as soon as you're going to be healed in three days, you'll be fine. But he's not. Verse 3, so uh, verse 2, Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, here's his prayer, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And Hezekiah wept sore. So that's his prayer. Unlike the, so kind of a little different than the first prayer. Hezekiah is praying to the Lord, Lord, remember what I've done for you. <laughs> remember my life. I've walked in truth and perfect heart and done that which is good in thy sight. Well, that's kind of an odd prayer. Lord, look what I've done. Do something about it. You, what is he really doing? He's praying a promise. He's praying a promise. He's praying boldly a promise. Uh, we've seen this throughout uh, through Scripture. He prayed, Hezekiah prayed God's promise of living a long life if you fear the Lord. Deuteronomy 5.33 Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. So Hezekiah took the promises that if you fear the Lord and obey his commandments, I'll give you a longer life. Hezekiah prays it. Hezekiah is praying God's promise. Lord, look at you. I've, I've obeyed. I've followed your commandments. Lord, I'm asking to live longer. Can you consider that? Consider your promise. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days. I've been faithful to you, Lord. Don't let the wicked live longer. This is what he's doing. So, he prays, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with the perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. Notice in the latter part of verse 3, and Hezekiah wept sore. This is a real guy. Getting news of death is uh, not uh, easy no matter what, is it? Not easy no matter, we're, we're all strong uh, Christians, and we know all know where we're going to go with our die, when we die, but still, that is difficult. That means separation from our loved ones and families and for that short period of time until they come and join us. Hezekiah wept because life is precious. Hezekiah wept because life is precious. This was difficult news and it struck him to the core. So here's the response. He didn't have to wait very long. I don't think Isaiah even got out of the room, out of the palace yet before God told him to return to Hezekiah, verse 4, Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 4. Then came the word of the Lord, Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And it shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, and the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Well, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which has gone down in the sun dial of Hazaz ten degrees backward, so the sun returned ten degrees by which degrees it was gone down. So Isaiah gives Hezekiah this horrible message of terminal illness. Uh, all of a sudden, God tells Isaiah, turn back around. I have a slightly different message for you to give to Hezekiah. And his message is... The Lord has heard your prayers. I've seen your tears, and I'm going to add 15 years to your life. You now have 15 years. I am honoring my promise to prolong your life because you have indeed obeyed my commandments. Probably when we when we study further to Hezekiah, probably this is probably the right time for him to die because he, if you were told you were given 15 years and nothing could happen to you for 15 years. You're going to do anything you want. <laughs> Instead of knowing the Lord could come at any moment, or I could be with the Lord at any moment, he had this 15 years that he knew he had. But anyway, that's a, a side note for later on. But the Lord answered his prayer. The Lord answered the prayer, and in fact, he went further and says, Assyria is not going to take over Jerusalem while you're alive. And here's an incredible, incredible sign uh, that you can, you can know. This is my promise to you that you have 15 years. I am going to move the sun backwards. So the sun is setting now. I'm going to move it back 10 degrees. Unusual, huh? Wow. Unusual. Only something that God could do. Only something that God could do. 
So that's the response that God gave. He answers quickly on that one. So that's his second prayer. His third prayer. Hezekiah's third prayer was in response to God's answer to prolong his life. He's responding, he's praying. Now, if you got this sort of news, how would you pray? Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Well, this is not what Hezekiah does. This is not what Hezekiah does. You would think he would start off his prayer praising the Lord, but he starts off his prayer by reflecting on the horror and oppression he felt when facing death. Verse 9, Isaiah 38, 9, The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered from his sickness, I said in the cutting off my days, I shall go to the gates of the grove. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. My age is departed and is removed from my shepherd's tent. I have cut off like a weaver my life. You will cut me off with pining sickness. From day even to night will thou make an end of me. I reckoned till morning that as a lion, so will he break all my bones. From day even to night will thou make an end of me. Like a crane or a swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. Mine eyes fail with looking upward. O Lord, I am oppressed, undertaken for me. Do you see the oppression in those words? Do you see the depression uh, in those words that uh, Hezekiah was, was feeling? And so here Hezekiah is reflecting on the horror of imminent terminal illness, imminent death, and facing death. Hezekiah then moves on and reflects on God's saving power. Give everything to the Lord. Give all your feelings to the Lord. That's what he wants. Right? Cast all your care upon him. Don't just give him the Sunday school stuff. Give him everything. Here Hezekiah is letting the Lord know how he's feeling. Verse 15 now Hezekiah then reflects on God's saving power and ability to restore life. Verse 15, What shall I say? He has spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. I shall go Spotify all my years in the bitterness of my soul. O Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So wilt thou recover me and make me to live. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness. But thou hast in love and to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. God's saving power. God has saved Hezekiah. God has given him life. God has raised him from the oppression of death. The grave cannot praise because he doesn't have them. Death cannot celebrate because he doesn't have Hezekiah. So Hezekiah reflects and gives God praise for restoration of life. And so finally we have here in verse 19 and 20, Hezekiah praises God. Verse 19, the living, the living, he shall praise thee. As I do this day, the father to the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me, therefore we will sing my songs to stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. Finally, we come. Hezekiah's prayer is just starts off in utter oppression and depression, and it's just beyond sadness. And then he recognizes God's saving power, and then he is praising the Lord for what he has done. Praising the Lord, and he's sharing uh, to his father, to the children, and the next generation, for one generation next, he's going to be letting know God's wonders and God's promises, and shall praise, praise him. So here, Hezekiah's three prayers. He's facing insurmountable situations, and he faces it with prayer. We can see the realness of Hezekiah, the situation he faced as a, as a king, facing uh, armies that are going to attack him, facing death on a personal level, and he prays through those crises. He prays for his nation, and he prays for his personal crisis and deadly illness. We need to be bold to take our situation to God in prayer so that the next generation, the next generation can see that he's the one true God, that he gets all the glory. Look what the Lord has done, and we can share with that. You know, in salvation, we can share those oppressive states that Hezekiah did, 
and then we can pray, look what the Lord has done, and then we can praise him for what he has done, right? But here we have, when you face an insurmountable situation, do what has kind did. <laughs> That's a prayer. All right, let's close with prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for Hezekiah and the example set before us. Lord, may you be with us now as we go and, and uh, share each person's name before you, before the throne. Lord, may you bless them. Lord, may you protect them. Lord, may you show them your glories and honor. May you use them. Lord, may they each one have a wonderful, incredible week because of what you have done for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Miss Chris has...